One of the signs that manifest the wrath of God today against America and against the white world period is the upset in nature. Everything that America tries to do today wherein once you were successful in all of your efforts, all of your uh, endeavors were successful. Anything that Uncle Sam put his hand on turned to gold. Everyone bowed to Uncle Sam. Everyone respected Uncle Sam. But not because I say so, but for facts. Today, the shoe is on the other foot. The whole world is turning its back on Uncle Sam. The whole world is looking down on Uncle Sam. The whole world looks at Uncle Sam with contempt and with increasing hatred. Why? Because Uncle Sam is the earth's leading hypocrite. The number one hypocrite on this earth is Uncle Sam. The Muslims who have accepted the religion of Islam and followed the religious guidance of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad have never bombed any churches, have never murdered any little girls, as was done in Birmingham, have never lynched anybody, have never at any time been guilty of initiating any aggressive acts of violence during the entire uh, 33 years or more that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad has been teaching us. The charge of violence against us actually stems from the guilt complex that exists in the conscious and subconscious minds of most white people in this country. They know that they've been violent in their brutality against Negroes. And they feel that someday the Negro is going to wake up and try and do unto them as they have done unto, do unto the whites as the whites have done unto us. We are a violent group. We do, uh, we are taught by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad to be, to obey the law, to respect everyone who respects us. We're taught to display courtesy, to be polite. But we're also taught that at any time, anyone in any way uh, inflicts or seeks to inflict violence upon us, we are within our religious rights to retaliate in self-defense to the maximum degree of our ability. We never initiate any violence upon anyone. But if anyone attacks us, we reserve the right to defend ourselves. So to accuse us of, of being violent is like accusing a man who is being lynched, who is being hung on a tree, uh, simply because he struggles vigorously against his lyncher. The victim is accused of violence, but the lyncher is never accused of violence. And I only point this out because the various racist groups that are set up in this country by whites and who have actually practiced violence against blacks for 400 years are never associated or identified or made synonymous with the term violence. But whites speak of Muslims almost synonymously with violence. Whenever Muslims are mentioned by them, violence is brought up. But, not, but it's not connected with any other group. This is a sort of a propaganda tactic, or what I would call psychological warfare, to uh, in some way make uh, the image of the Muslims in this country be a violent image rather than a religious image. What's interesting is that uh, members of the Nation of Islam have not used violence even when uh, black Americans were attacked. Uh, how do you account for this? D does this in any way contradict uh, some of the basic premises of your movement? I don't know how you mean. Well, you maintain, for example, that, that you will not or that you should not use violence unless you are attacked by the white man. And I think we can note in the last several years, certainly, dozens and dozens and dozens of instances in which Negroes have been uh, attacked, uh, killed in some instances. You mean in these demonstrations? These demonstrations and, and the bombings, for example, recently in Birmingham where they killed four little Negro girls. And what interests me is the fact is, is that the Nation of Islam has not done anything to retaliate. I think you should be happy 
Uh, but no, that, no, 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 no. The important thing is, does your lack of action no, contradict any no. of your basic principles? I'll explain it. You should be happy that Muslims who follow the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, number one, don't believe in any form of integration and, who be and, and believe that every mention of the word integration by whites, whether it be from the mouth of Kennedy on down to the mouth of the lowest, raggediest white liberal in the street who is beatnik-like involving himself in these integration efforts, if we believed in it, we would integrate and we would fight anybody who got in our way or made any effort whatsoever to stop us from integrating. Mm -hmm. If we really believed that the law of the land, the Supreme Court, and other so-called judicial bodies were for real uh, when they talked about integration, we would integrate. <coughs> and knowing that the law was on our side, and any effort we made to demonstrate toward integration, why, we would know the law should be on our side uh, if it's the law of the land. If it is the law of the land, then the demonstrators are within the law, and the uh, uh, discriminators are against the law. Mm -hmm. But to show you the hypocrisy of the law, when Negroes demonstrate for integration, instead of uh, arresting the discriminators, the law arrests the demonstrators. So this is a foolish move on the part of Negroes. Mm -hmm. And when you foolishly get yourself involved with a, uh, an enemy, then whatever comes upon you, that's your business. As Muslims, we believe that separation is the best way and the only sensible way, not integration. And uh, on, but on the other hand, when we see our people being brutalized by white bigots, white racists, uh, we think that they are foolish to allow themselves to be beaten and brutalized and do nothing whatsoever to protect themselves. They are foolish. They, have, if they should have the right to, de to defend themselves against any attack made against them by anyone. If a dog is biting a black man, the black man should kill the dog. Whether the, do the dog is a police dog, a hound dog, or any kind of dog. If a dog is sick on a black man, when that black man is doing nothing but trying to uh, take advantage of what the government says is supposed to be his, then that black man should kill that dog or any two-legged dog who sicks the dog on it. Should other black men help that particular person who was attacked? I think you'll find, sir, that there will come a time when black people wake up and become intellectually independent enough to think for themselves, as other humans are intellectually independent enough to think for themselves, then the black man will think like a black man. And he will feel for other black people. And this new thinking and feeling will cause black people to stick together. And then at that point, you'll have a situation where when you attack one black man, you are attacking all black men. And this type of black thinking will cause all black people to stick together. And this type of thinking also will bring an end to the brutality inflicted upon black people by white people. And it is the only thing that will bring an end to it. No federal court, state court, or city court will bring an end to it. It's something that the black man has to bring an end to himself. Minister Malcolm, let me, on the basis of your two remarks, ask uh, a, a double-pronged question. One, is it then your assertion that the laws res with respect to how Negroes are supposed to have equal opportunity and equal rights in this country are not meaningful or believed by whites? And secondly, what is then is your opinion and attitude toward the civil rights movement in general, and particularly uh, the Reverend Martin Luther King and his philosophy of nonviolent direct action? If uh, the white people really passed meaningful laws, it would not be necessary to pass any more laws. There are already enough laws on the law books to protect an American citizen. You only need uh, additional laws when you're dealing with someone who is not regarded as an American citizen. But whites are so hypocritical 
They don't want to admit that this black man is not a citizen. Uh, so they classify him as a, a second-class citizen to, uh, to get around uh, making him a real citizen. If he was a real citizen, you'd need no more laws. You'd need no civil rights legislation. Uh, civil rights, uh, when you have civil rights, you have citizenship. It's automatic. White people don't need laws to protect their citizenship because they're citizens. But they, want, they, uh, they don't want to tell us we're not citizens. And at the same time, they don't want to pass laws that are meaningful enough to protect us as if we were citizens. And the Supreme Court desegregation decision is the best example I know. That's a law from the Supreme Court. Ten years have gone by. No, no desegregated schools. It hasn't been implemented beyond, I think, 9% in 10 years. So this just shows you the hypocrisy of the American white man. They talk out of both sides of their mouth. And uh, for this reason, we who are Muslims, that is, who believe in the religion of Islam, who believe in God, we don't believe that black people will ever get any laws, get any problem with laws being passed or uh, new persons being put in office, uh, white liberals being put in office. There is nothing that the white man will ever do to bring about uh, true, sincere uh, citizenship or civil rights recognition for black people in this country. Who taught you, please, who taught you to hate the texture of your hair? Who taught you to hate the color of your skin to such extent that you bleach to get like the white man? Who taught you to hate the shape of your nose? and the shape of your lips? Who taught you to hate yourself from the top of your head to the soles of your feet? Who taught you to hate your own kind? Who taught you to hate the race that you belong to? So much so that you don't want to be around each other. No, before you come asking Mr. Muhammad, does he teach hate, you should ask who yourself who taught you to hate being what God gave you. teach you to love the hair that God gave you. Here you way out in the middle of the ocean, can't swim, and you worried about someone that's in the bathtub and can't swim. We don't steal, we don't gamble, we don't lie, and we don't cheat. And that also deprives the government of revenue. <laughs> because you can't get into a whiskey bottle without getting past the government seal. You can't open a deck of cards without getting past the government seal. Here's a white man makes the whiskey and then puts you in jail for getting drunk. <laughs> he sells you the cards and the dice and puts you in jail when he gets if you using them. So he's against us because we fix it where he can't catch you anymore. We take the dice out of your hands and the cards out of your hands and the whiskey out of your head. The most disrespected person in America is the black woman. The most unprotected one, a person in America is the black woman. The most neglected person in America is the black woman. And as Muslims, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us to respect our women and to protect our women. Then the only time a Muslim really gets real violent is when someone goes to molest his woman. We will kill you for our woman. I'm, I'm making it plain, yes. We will kill you for our woman. We believe that if the white man will do whatever is necessary to see that his woman gets respect and protection, then you and I will never be recognized as men until we stand up like men and place the same penalty over the head of anyone who puts his filthy hands out to put in the direction of our women.